Welcome to this week's Tech Clinic, where we try to fix your bike-related issues and answer any technical questions you might have. And first up, we've got Costas Mandalore, who asks, a quick question, does carbon fiber have a shelf life and does it fatigue over time? So that's a good one to start us off this week. And carbon fiber frames generally don't have a shelf life. It's, it's not really something that's expected of a carbon fiber frame. So a carbon fiber frame is made of two components. You've got the carbon fiber and then the resin as well, which bonds all that together. And neither component of those are sort of have a shelf life or degrade over time. Carbon will just last for a very, very long time. And the resin that is all bonded together with is affected slightly by UV or ultraviolet rays, but nearly all bikes are painted in ultraviolet protective paint. So that kind of negates that problem. So I wouldn't really worry about having a shelf life on your carbon fiber frame. Chances are, the biggest thing you need to worry about is damage or any impacts or crashes that you might come across. So be wary of those. Next in, we've got Gustav Bork and Kaffer, who asks, I've ordered a new bike, which is a Canyon Ultimate, and it should fit him. It says he's 186 centimeters tall, almost the same height as me, very good. Uh, wondering, will the cranks fit? I'm currently using 170 mil cranks and the bike will come with 175s. Um, should I get shorter cranks for the new bike or will I get used to them? So you're perfectly fine using the shorter cranks as you do or the longer cranks that will come on your bike, but you will need to adjust your saddle height slightly to account for that difference in crank length. And I tend to use both 170 and 175 mil cranks over various years. And I wouldn't worry too much on deciding which one you like the best. If, if it was me, I'd probably try and use the 175s that come on your bike, see if you like them, get used to them. And if you don't, then you can try and switch back to the 170s that you've been using previously. It might just save you having to splash out on some cranks on your brand new bike. Next in is Black Demon Rider who asks, he always parks, when he's, when he's parking his bike, he always puts the chain into the smallest chain ring and smallest sprocket on the cassette so that he gets extra time if anyone was to try and steal his bike because it would be pretty hard to get away. Is this logical? Um, yeah, I'm gonna say it is fairly logical because it's also something I've done when I leave my bike outside a shop or a cafe, for example. I put it into the hardest gear and the theory that I have behind it is that if someone was to jump on the bike, it'd be in such a hard gear, they wouldn't really be able to pedal and get away. So in theory, they're not gonna go anywhere and you have a chance to run out and grab your bike and save it vanishing forever. Although that said, the best thing you can do is either not leave your bike unattended or just lock it up and keep it nice and secure anyway. So probably best just to invest in a bike lock rather than just run the risk of leaving your bike outside. And our next question in is from Sword Martins, who says, is there any difference between carbon and alloy spokes apart from the weight? Is there a difference in the ride feel or the durability? And are they worth the premium price? So starting with the first part of your question, the difference between carbon and alloy or metal spokes, which, which are a bit more traditional, um, there definitely is a difference that you can tell between them. And I wasn't really too sure that there would be initially, but going back a few years when I was still racing, one of the brands of wheels that we were sponsored by at the time were releasing a carbon spokes wheel. And I was fortunate enough to test that out before it was released. And I was fairly convinced that I wouldn't be able to tell the difference, but do you know what? The carbon spokes do absorb quite a lot of the road vibrations that you would traditionally be able to feel through the bike and through the handlebars, for example. So that is a key difference and something that did surprise me. As you say, obviously there is the weight saving to be had, but carbon spokes are very, very strong as well. So I wouldn't worry about the durability of those because in some circumstances, carbon spokes can hold a higher tensile strength than a traditional or metal spoke, which is pretty impressive. And one of the other parts of your questions, are they worth the premium price? Well, that's a tricky one to answer, but upgrading to a wheel set that's got carbon spokes it's not an upgrade I'd say you should be doing as one of your first bike upgrades, for example. It's probably one that you should make a little bit further down the line when you've got a good base setup, you've got a good frame, good components on your bike. But if you are looking at upgrading your wheel set in the future and you've already plans to invest in a new wheel set, it's worth looking to see if the wheel set that you're looking at has the option of choosing carbon spokes because if the price isn't a vast amount more, I'd say it's worth going for it. Next in, there's a question from Reese Pepper. 
And their question is, the front shifter seems to shift from the large ring to the small chain ring with skipping the middle chain ring entirely, only on the downshift. Okay, I see. So they've got a triple chain ring set up and as they're shifting down the chain rings from the largest down to the smallest, it just seems to miss out the middle one. But on the upshift, it works perfectly fine. Is there a reason for this? Interesting question that actually. I don't know what could be causing that straight away, but the first things that you need to check is that the mech is set correctly. You need to check that the limit screws are set correctly, so that's the high limit screw and the low limit screw, and those will act as the end points for the mech so it can stop at either end of its motion. Next up, you will want to check the indexing and cable tension to ensure that it's set correctly, and chances are, I reckon the cable tension is the main issue that you're having here. But if you're adamant that these are all set correctly, you could probably check to see if there's an internal fault with the shifter, but I see that being fairly unlikely because as you say, it works correctly on the upshift, but not on the downshift. So chances are it just needs resetting and setting up correctly and you should have a perfectly functioning front derailleur. And the last question for this week is from Shelley Palum Palumbo. Okay, sorry about that if I haven't said that right. And their question is, why are some free hubs so loud and why are some so quiet? And the reason behind this is all down to the internal designs of the free hub. So the free hub has a toothed engagement with some pulls which are operated by springs and that's what enables the free hub to engage in one direction and be free in the opposite direction, allowing you to free wheel along the road whilst your wheels keep on turning. And the reason that some of them are louder than others is the design of these little teeth. Um, some are different to others and also the force of the spring which holds them in place. Some springs are a bit weaker and some springs are a bit stronger and the stronger springs will be considerably louder than the weaker ones. Another aspect that will change the noise of the free hub is the grease or the lubricant that's inside it. So a real thick grease is going to make the free hub noise quite quiet and a thinner grease will make it a bit louder. Although that said, the loudness of a free hub is not really any way to check whether it's a good quality or a lower quality wheel set. It's just something to consider and is a characteristic of those wheels. As I said, yeah, that's the last question for this week. So thanks for your questions. Keep them coming in the comments section down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. And each week we'll try and get to the good ones. Thanks very much.